of the Michigan football program. It's a solid team with a record of three and one as they come in. Michigan State now emerging from the tunnel under George Perlis. George has been here four years. He's all even in Big Ten play at 17, 17 and one, 25, 24 and one overall, but they are sky high for this ball game today. To continue uh, talking about this stunt 4-3 defense now with Bob Greasy. Bo Schembechler, uh, talking to him yesterday down at Ann Arbor, this is what Bo had to say about having to play against that stunt 4-3. It is the most difficult defense to run against uh, that we have in our conference. It's a unique concept. They play it extremely well. Of the five years that they've been playing this defense, this is by far the best defense they've had. So it is a challenge. There's no question about that. We have scored a lot of points against this team, but it hasn't been as a result of moving against the defense. We've blocked kicks. Uh, we've uh, we've uh, recovered fumbles. We've gotten field position. We've done a lot of things like that that have gotten us uh, scores. Now on the other side, uh, Bob, the Michigan defense. Here's Jack from the field. Keith, an 80-year rivalry would be reason enough to go after the game today, but what's more important for these Michigan State Spartans is Rose Bowl. Now they're only 1-0 in conference play and kind of very early to think about it, but throughout the week in talking to them, they've said if they can knock off Michigan, everything will come up roses. They may be forgetting about Ohio State, but today it's Michigan. They want to beat them, go to the Rose Bowl. Back up to Keith. John Langlo will kick it off for the Michigan State Spartans. Michigan uh, receiving the ball and will have the first possession with Jamie Morris and Alan Jefferson, the deep people. He's put his two tailbacks back there now to return the opening kickoff. Jefferson, but the sophomore from Detroit finally controls it and gets it out to about the 20 21 yard line. Elliot Hoosar, Vitaly Chester, Doring Brown. Big people up front. I mean, really big people for the Michigan Wolverines. McMurtry and Colasar are wide. Quarterback to Demetrius Brown. Bunch will open at fullback. Jared Bunch is a 225 pounder. And of course, Jamie Morris will come in there at the tailback position. And uh, number 23 is on his way into the University of Michigan football record books with this kind of performance. He's surely headed for a thousand plus season if he stays healthy. And he's, he'll get dinged up as his coach said, but he'll play for you. All right, call it first down from the 21. And they send Chris Callaway in motion and give it to Morris. They fake the reverse. Morris keeps it, gets a block on the corner and breaks it. Out to the 41. 20 yard pickup, Todd Crum saved the touchdown. Well, we talked about the stunning 4 3 of Michigan State. One way to get around it is to go wide. They'll fake a reverse. Perlis says we build our defense from the inside out. That time, a good block on the outside, and Morris, one man away from breaking it on the first play. So, Michigan. Starts out east and west, and then got it going north and south for the big gainer. Brown gives it to Morris again, and Jamie runs into the middle, and there's never going to be a whole lot of room in the middle against this defensive alignment. Consisting of the down guys, uh, Bergen, Nichols, Davis, and Buddy. The linebackers are Moore, Snow, and Larson, and uh, you're going to hear Snow's name called a lot. He always gets in on a lot of plays. Reed, Miller, Crum, and Barnett are the defensive people in the secondary for Michigan State. Bo Beckler on the sidelines after a bout with kidney stones. He's going to have that fixed, he said, next week. It'll be second down from the 44, second and seven. That's McMurtry in motion. And the ball goes to Jamie Morris, bouncing outside, runs away from one tackler, and hits the sideline right at midfield. So he's a little bit short of the first down by a yard. 
Todd Crum, number 35, and Harlan Barnett, the free safety and the quarterback on that side, getting over to get him. But again, Morris was just a step away from something really big. Third down and one with Bill Webb coming into the backfield now as they line it up in a wishbone formation. Give it to Morris, get the block. Turns the corner on second effort and appears to have his first down, and he does. At the Michigan State 47, he got away from Harlan Bennett. Bennett had him behind the line of scrimmage, but couldn't hold it. Well, Michigan State's going to have to sharpen up their tackling on the corner. I'm just going to comment the last two plays that Morris has carried. He has broken a tackle to make uh, additional yardage in that time to pick up the first down. Jamie only stands 5'7", but he's got 185 pounds plus. He's a tough, tough runner. On first down from the 47, Polisar goes in motion for Michigan, and Morris has it one more time and gets daylight on the right side and goes down the sideline, tiptoeing all the way to the 34 of Michigan State. And again, Todd Crum makes the hit. Running 4-3 as we were talking about. Watch the two inside men. This tackle will go first. The other one will loop. Morris will come through the hole over here and still get good yardage. 75 as Davis comes around. The fullback picks him up. Nice uh, hole there for Morris to squeak, uh, squirt through and a good uh, pickup. Yeah, Bunch uh, laid a hit on the pursuer. Got his man and Morris got his yards and he got a first down for Michigan at the state 34. Demetrius Brown for his first pass goes down the middle with it. Hits Polisar inside the 15, down at the 14. And Brown's first pass is successful. That could mean a lot for him. He threw three interceptions the first game of the season against Notre Dame. Since then, he's only thrown one interception. This drive couldn't have been orchestrated any better. Get your running game going, use the play action pass, and then get your wide receiver in behind the linebackers. And as you said, Keith, the first completion for the young Brown is a big one. Now he's going to go to a double tight end alignment. And the right side of the line where big John Elliott works, probably going to see a lot of action right about here. John is 305 pounds. Give it to Morris. He goes that way, picks his way through the traffic. And a penalty flag here against Michigan State face mask. And uh, the Wolverines are going to move it on downfield as a result of the penalty. Snow and Miller on the tackle, but in reaching for Morris, somebody got his face mask. Jim Kimmeling, the referee. Les Rule and the umpire. Tom Ransom, the headlinesman. John Ask, the line judge. Otto Poles, the field judge. Henry Armstead, the side judge. Back judge is Glenn Fortin. We have a five yard face mask against the defense. Still first down. Jamie Morris has run six times, 47 yards, picked up three first downs. And uh, got an upset building in the Big Ten. Third quarter now, Indiana 17, Ohio State 10. The football is at the eight. First down and five for Michigan. Brown to Morris. And Jamie gets to the four. It'll be second down and one for the first down from the four-yard line of Michigan State. This is the one thing that George Perlis and his coaching staff did not want to see. Michigan take the ball and just pound it down their throat. They've only thrown the ball one time. It was successful. A lot of these uh, plus yardage plays have been because of Jamie Morris, the defense was in pretty good shape. Morris just made good moves to pick up some positive yards. Back to the wishbone as Phil Webb checks in with Jared Bunch and Jamie Morris. Big man up front gets his penalty flag, goes down. Bunch carries, gets what appears to be the first down, but let's see about the penalty flag. It came from one of the men on the side. Line judge threw the flag. Let's see about the 
the piece of laundry here. The Michigan people say it's on Michigan State. Let's see what Jim Kimberling says. He agrees offside against the Spartans. So the Spartans have made two defensive mistakes. One an inadvertent face mask and now an offside. And they're helping the Wolverines down. And you see Jamie Morris now has moved up into second place among the all time running backs at Michigan and there have been some great ones certainly have uh, Butch Wolfolk uh, went on to play pro football Rob Lytle Jamie Morris's brother is playing pro football and I'm sure that uh, Jamie will be a high draft choice so once his uh, eligibility is over with at the University of Michigan the interesting thing about Morris he is only 5'7 his linemen are 6'4 6 6'5 6 and all the way over 270 so a lot of defensive players can't see him when he's coming through the cracks it is first and goal from the two for Michigan. Morris bouncing outside, trapped behind the line of scrimmage, and brought down back on the six. John Miller, the strong safety, was the man that got the first hit on him. Well, both sides are a little feisty down there, but well, that was we a said, good play. We thought that this was going to be a very physical game, and some intimidation uh, was going to be present early on. And it's no surprise to see him uh, pushing and shoving after the play. That loss, incidentally, dropped Jamie back to third all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take bets that he'll go back to second pretty soon. <laughs> yes, he will. <laughs> second and goal for the six. Brown wants to throw it. Out of bounds. He could not stop, and he went out of bounds back on the 13-yard line. He kept looking and looking and looking. He knew pursuit was there. Derek Reed, who came to Michigan State out of SMU, chased him all the way to the sidelines. And then by the time uh, Demetrius realized where he was, he was out of real estate. Well, it was a poorly designed play. I think it was a passing situation. And they had a wishbone, double tied in. It was a slow developing play. Michigan State read pass the entire way. Good coverage all over the field. So it is third and goal, and the ball is back now outside the 13. Here comes the noise. Young quarterback Brown, this is one of the things that he's going to have to deal with here today. When to back off and when not to. Was, uh, talking with the Shem Beckler earlier in the season, he said it's tough to win in the Big Ten on the road because of the noise factor, especially when you have a young quarterback. Jim Kimmerling gave him the benefit of the doubt on that one. However, uh, when you know when Michigan comes back up, the crowd will come right with him. The best thing for a young quarterback to do is to get up under center, act like you don't hear the crowd, and get the ball snapped. And that way, you'll just uh, ignore the crowd. If you back off a time or back off twice, the crowd then feels like they can be in the ball game. You just get up there and snap it and take them out of it. You also run the risk, though, of getting the flag on the home team if you persist too long. Michigan State players now are asking the crowd to quiet down a little bit. The guys on the sidelines are waving their arms trying to jack them up. So <laughs> I'm sure Schembechler has told Brown what to do in this situation. That is not snap it if you can't hear it. Third down and goal from the 13. Straight back, pressure coming. One man misses Brown. His pass is away into the end zone, and it is incomplete. Pass intended for Jeff Brown. Tim Moore just missed him for a big loss. Here's Tim Moore. Now watch the stunt. This man's going to come outside. He's going to loop to the inside. Brown and make a good move to get out of his way. You see a huge gap there for Tim Moore. And then he just throws it away. But a sack was avoided. On the field now, Mike Gillette for a field goal try from 31 yards, and it is good. And so he has tied Ali Haji Sheik as Michigan's all-time leader in field goals with 31 as the Wolverines go to the early lead. Zone. It's Bloomington, wouldn't it, if they ain't going to win that ball game? Start 4-1. and one. We had uh, Ohio State last week, and their offense only scored 10 points at right. Illinois, so uh, they're having some offensive problems. Right now, 
Craig Johnson and Blake Ezor are the deep people for Michigan State as Mike Gillette, who's put his name in the record books, will kick it off for Michigan. The Spartans about to get the ball for the first time. He's hooked the kick and hooked it out of bounds, so he'll back up five and kick it again. Well, I think everybody figured uh, that uh, Phil Mallory was going to make things happen over at IU, and he certainly has. Got a good quarterback in Schnell, as you see Bo kind of chuckling. You know, it's not a bright day here. Bo's got those dark glasses on. I think it's just out of habit, but uh, getting back to Indiana, Schnell is the quarterback, is playing well. They've got an excellent linebacker in Van Waker, Van Waiters, and a good running back. And uh, if Indiana beats Ohio State in Columbus, it'll be a big upset. They're now in the fourth quarter. One of the things about uh, Bill Mallory, though, is he teaches a toughness. He sells that toughness factor to his kid wherever he's been. And he's obviously done it over there. All right, here we go. Well, and, one of, from the 30. and one of his kids is on the field here today. He's a strong safety, a starting strong That's safety right. for the Wolverines. Gillette from the 30. Hits it high, and it's a relatively short kick as uh, Johnson comes up and takes it for Michigan State. And the Spartans will start from their 32-yard line. So that's pretty good field position as Mandarich, Kula, Sherma, Tata, Hool, and Sargent open up front. And the backfield consists of McAllister, the quarterback, and uh, everybody believes, and certainly the coaching staff believes, that he has to play a key role today, along with Lorenzo White. Hugh is the fullback, starting at fullback, with Boyer outside along with Andre Rison. Rison is the guy that both here. Jim Beckler worries about Rison and the big play. Hugh is not in there. It is James Moore in a fullback. To start out of the I formation, it goes to Lorenzo White. And White will get maybe a yard before he is rolled up by the Michigan linebacker, John Willingham. Messner Harris Herman are the deep people. Now, here's where Michigan could get hurt. All four of these linebackers are young, and uh, none of them figured heavily in Michigan's defensive plans at the start of the season. But injuries have come along and put them all on the field with Campbell, Mallory, Mitchell, and Arnold in the secondary. Second down, call it eight. And this time it is more the fullback, wedging his way up to around the 37 before he is stopped, brought down by an inside backer, J.J. Grant and Mark Messner in the American League Championship Series. Minnesota in the seventh, leading Detroit six to five. Oh, came back. Like the Cardinals came back last night. Well, the tra Twins trying to shake off that road jinx early on if they can. Third down for the Spartans. They need about four, and McAllister gets to the outside, gets the first down. He crossed the 45. And picks up a first down. Now, this is what they want from him. When you run the ball down the line, he's made some bad decisions in getting rid of the ball. Here's one of the linebackers. This was a run the whole way. Watch the linebacker as one of the wide receivers, I believe it was Ryzen, comes in and blocks him to help spring him right there. It's Boyer, 17. This was a run the entire way. And if uh, McAllister is having problems throwing the football, they want to get some production out of him running it. Remember what George Furless said. He wants him to run north and south. First down. And McAllister comes, makes the fit, keeps it, goes to midfield five yards. This is the comment that Bo Schimbeckler had yesterday in talking about his linebacking core. I would say that the four linebackers will play with in the Michigan State game we did not figure would be playing for us at this time. Well, that's that's a major adjustment <laughs> in your thinking. Well, their, their, their leader on defense, Andre McIntyre, tore an Achilles tendon last year. He's a fifth-year senior out for the year. It was a severe loss at linebacker for the Wolverines. Here's your wishbone. They just turn around and pitch it back to Lorenzo White. And White is going to be held short of the first down as they knock him out of bounds around the Michigan 46. Anthony Mitchell got the hit on him. But White last week in the second half against Iowa, in which he gained 166 yards, finally started putting his shoulder into people. He's been tiptoeing around some in the earlier ball game. 
And I would imagine he's surely, he would, he would admit it yesterday when I talked to him, but I'm of the opinion he's got to be getting a little tired of all this Heisman hype. Yeah, he is. And this is the wishbone, double tight end wishbone. White's got it again. But he isn't going anywhere that time as number 30 came up like a bullet, John Milligan, and got him. Milligan saw the opening and just came flying through a sophomore out of Trenton, Michigan. That's going to bring up fourth down and a yard, and it brings into the ball game the punter for Michigan State. He's a good one. Greg Montgomery averaging right at 46 yards per kick, ranked number five in the nation, but by the end of the season, it may be better than that. Eric Campbell is the deep man for the Wolverines. He hits it high. He wants to kill it short of the goal line, and he's going to, forcing Campbell into a fair catch back at the eight. So the Wolverines have the ball back on their own eight-yard line, 39 yards, very efficient kick by Montgomery. 8.16 to go in the first quarter. Michigan took the ball and marched it down the field. The defense really didn't get involved until they got inside the 10-yard line. Then they shoved them back and forced them to take a field goal. They go to Jamie Morris. Morris is hit. Fumbles the football, and Michigan has recovered it. Ball came popping loose in the Notre Dame game. Jamie had a couple of loose footballs, and it hurt him. It was John Vitale, the center, who will cover it. Not much there in the four hole, as you would call it if you were a football player, and that time he gets up, uh, upended. The ball squirts out, and Vitale is on it for the Wolverines, but uh, nothing there that time. There's a loss of a yard back to the seven. Second down, 11 for the Wolverines. Mac Murtry is off the field now as they bring in another tight end, Derek Walker. Morris trying to get outside, can't do it. He's going to lose another yard. There's a swarming, stunning Michigan State defense. The same defense held Iowa to minus 16 yards rushing last week, had five sacks on the quarterback, and is ranked second against the rush in the Big Ten. It was Mark Nichols leading the play defensively that time, number 83, the big tackle. And he's the ringleader of that front group in the defensive alignment. Now it is third down and about 12. Brown out of the end zone. Down the middle it goes, and it's drilled to Greg McMurtry, who makes the catch and picks up a first down at the 25-yard line. What an impressive throw this is. Out of your own end zone, this tells you how much confidence Jim Becker has in the young quarterback, Brown, who has come a long way, as we told you, through three interceptions his first game this year. That is like throwing uphill against guys that are 10 feet tall. I want to tell you, I've been there. It's not easy to do. And I, uh, the first two passes he's thrown, Bob, he has really had some zip on it. Right on the money. Not the balloons that he threw in his opening game. This is Jamie Morris. And Jamie is across the 30, out near the 31 before they get him. <laughs> Jamie has now bounced back to second all time in the Michigan rushing <laughs> record book. Demetrius Brown was an outstanding player in high school. He went to Miami Beach High School in uh, Florida and uh, grew up in uh, Opelika, which was one of the tougher areas of town to grow up in. But Bo has uh, really brought him along, and he's playing very well this year. Second down and about five. Morris hit behind the line of scrimmage. The defenders were there with the ball, and leading it, John Buddy. Ed Moore. Here's Buddy here. Now watch him as he slants in. He's going to have a collision in the backfield. This which is what you're going to get when you slant and stunt as much as Michigan State does. You're going to get tackles for loss of yardage, and this is what they count on to put the opposition in second and long situations. 
Ball coming back to the 26. Third down and nine. Allen Jefferson is now in the backfield, and Jamie Morris out for a breather. As Demetrius Brown looks for Colazar. Incomplete. Thrown a little too deep. He just looped it up on a fly pattern. And Colazar, who is one of the faster people in the Big Ten Conference, ball was thrown too, a little too far. That's Gary Moeller, the offensive coordinator and assistant head coach. He's upset with Brown. Obviously, he threw the wrong receiver. Uh, McMurtry was coming in over the middle on a square in route. Got pressure on the kicker. Oh, they call it. It was a late flag, but he knocked him down. Craig Johnson, a cornerback, comes in trying to get pressure on Monty Robbins, the punter, and he ran into him. And Robbins uh, had just enough contact to go on down, and he got the flag. Watching from over here, he's going to be the last man. Now, when he comes in, this man is going to block him into the punter. In the pros, if, if you block into the punter, it's not a rough. But in college, if you're blocked into the punter, it's still a, a foul, and the ref referee is right there to call it. Well, he hesitated a bit before he pulled the flag and then went ahead and pulled it. I don't like this rule, Keith, because uh, it's not the man's fault that's trying to block the punt. He gets blocked into it. He took a he took an angle where he would have missed the punter. But it, because he was blocked, then the route changed. He was blocked into the punter, and uh, it takes away some aggressiveness on the part of the punt block team uh, when you have that rule in there. So it'll give him another kick because it is not an automatic first down, so it is still fourth down. And Robbins now will have a little extra five yards to work with here. And he gets a much better kick out of it. All the way back to the 16-yard line. This is Andre Risen looking for some help. Doesn't get it. Gets his shoulders upfield to the 24-yard line. That was a 51-yard punt before Alan Bishop could bring him down. And while it, the penalty didn't particularly hurt in the sense of yardage, the punt was much better. 24-10 Hoosiers now. Hello, Indiana. Welcome to the Big Ten race. They get Minnesota next week. First down for Michigan State from the 24-yard line. Moore is your fullback. And McAllister straight back throws it, gets it for White. White is picked up. After a nine-yard gain, one yard short of his first down. Arnold and Mallory, the strong safety and the weak side corner, picked him up. That's the son of Bill Mallory, who's having one of his best days with his Indiana football team no right question. now. Take a look at McAllister. He completed only two passes last week against Iowa. Had a tough day, and uh, Morris Watts, the offensive coordinator, said he made some bad decisions, but... Starting off this game today, throwing the ball short to White, getting some confidence. Maybe he'll play a little bit, a little bit better. They give him a good spot on that, and he gets the first down by half the football. So the Spartans with 4:06 to play in the first quarter, down by three points. Michigan leading three nothing on a 31-yard field goal by Mike Gillette. First down, just short of their own 34. Now you got Boyer and Risen both wide to the bottom of the picture. And McAllister gives it on a little draw to Lorenzo White. White trying to bounce it outside. Gets across the 35, near the 37. We check in with Jack Aruth. Keith, remember last Monday night when Giants coach Bill Parcells chuckled when they introduced the wishbone? Well, Bo Schemblecker is not chuckling today. He was very concerned when Coach Fearless went with it in that first set of downs. He gathered his defense together, and they've been working it out. And hopefully, he says, during this set of plays, they'll be able to combat it a little bit better. Let's go back upstairs. All right, Jack. Second down. And they have marked White out of bounds, and uh, still it's about 10 yards to go here as McAllister's pass is down the middle and on the money, and a great catch by Boyer. Boyer had the ball come to him just as David Arnold nailed him, and he just hung on to it, tucked it away, and bounced up and down on the Michigan 45-yard line, but it's a first down. Big league play all the way around. McAllister gets outside where he doesn't have to read, can see a lot better, 
throws the ball on the money. Boyer takes a good hit and holds on to the football. Good play all around. I'll tell you one thing, they made him know he was in the neighborhood, though, didn't he? Well, Pearl has said it's going to be a physical game, and uh, it's been that so far. First down for the Spartans at the Michigan 45, and McAllister throwing again. Throws underneath to the 40. Good quick grab by Lorenzo White. Ball was thrown behind him a little bit. At the top of your screen, 79, is Tony Manderich, who's doing an outstanding job along the front line there as he's blocking on Mesner. Got his arm wrapped around him. No wonder he's doing such a good job on him. <laughs> he's holding him. <laughs> Mesner's pushing. He said, hey, what's going on here? <laughs> you get outside the frame, it's, it's holding. Second down and five. They go left side with White. Good move by White. And he breaks it for the first down all the way inside the 25 of Michigan. I think it's apparent that Lorenzo White is now putting his shoulder into his work. Good blocking on the left side of that line again. White dips to the inside to hold the blockers and then runs around, runs away from Willingham, uh, 39, and then loses the ball. Fortunately for Michigan State, it rolled out of bounds. And they've got a first down first at the down. Wolverines, 24. Michigan leading 3 0 in the late stages of the first quarter. McAllister gives it to White, and he's coming to the right. He got a block on the corner, but there's good pursuit by number 20, Anthony Mitchell. And Mitchell wouldn't let him cut it back inside. Lorenzo White is a cutback runner. And if you can discipline yourself enough, all you have to do is really just kind of wait for it. Well, the problem that with most of the defenses have been playing him, Keith, to cut back. And he has been kind of tiptoeing, as you mentioned early on, looking for the cutback, and nothing has been there. That time you saw him bounce out. And what he needs to do when there is nothing there, just lower his head and get upfield and make four or five yards and come back for another play. Second down, three. McAllister. Down right about the line of scrimmage. Maybe they'll, they'll give him something on that. He'll pick up a yard or so. J.J. Grant had a piece of it. Grant being a junior out of Liverpool, New York. Grant's the leading tackler on this ball club. We mentioned the problems that the linebackers for the University of Michigan have been having this year. Not only did they lose McIntyre, but Curtis Feaster is out. Steve yeah, Thiebert went out last week. Look at this. With a knee injury. Uh, Billy Harris, the nose guard, can just barely stand, holding uh, a tender right leg off the ground. I don't know whether it's ankle or knee, but uh, Billy Harris is hurt. He is their senior middle guard, 270 pounder. T.J. Osmond, a sophomore out of North Hills, Pennsylvania, will be his replacement. He checks in at 245 pounds. There's 56 in the middle of your screen. Blocking on Shermer, number 60. He just gets twisted around inside there. You know, how many times does it happen that when you get injuries to a certain uh, unit, your offense or defense, it all hits in the same area. Linebackers and nose tackle have been one of the areas hardest hit for the University of Michigan. And now Harris, who is a dominant player, along with Mesner, along that front line, limps to the sideline. The ball is at the 16-yard line of Michigan, where it is third down and three. Pitch it to White. Gets a block. First down. He's inside the 10. Down to about the 7. Doug Mallory, the strong safety, knocked him out. And the way things are going with their defensive unit and all the injuries, they're going to have to move somebody from offense to defense for Michigan. Just a toss behind Mandarich, the big uh, 79, the tight end, and then also 86, Kasevich takes a good block. There's Mandarich putting his man on the ground. And it's first down and goal from the seven for Michigan State. White again. Inside the five. Touchdown for the Spartans. They lost the official over there in the crowd. I never saw his arm. I never up. saw him go up either. It was a great effort by White. All right, 
White with his last four, five carries. Four carries, 17 yards, eight yards, nine yards, six yards, touchdown. Lang low for the extra point try. And it's good. So with 48 seconds to play in the first quarter, the Spartans go to the lead. Tata 61 is pulling behind the two blocking backs, few and more. Takes out Campbell, gets around the end, and carries Mallory into the end zone. Outstanding effort. So the sellout crowd at Spartan Stadium turning their balloons loose as their team leads. Uh, a lot of people, Minnesota, Wake Forest, undefeated. You, you know who's down there? Bill Dooley. Dooley. Good one. Three thirty-four. Nice drive. Uh, McAllister, I thought, was the key there. Keep throwing the ball on first down and, uh, and, and kind of loosening up that Wolverine defense to allow White to pick up some yardage. That's a 31st career touchdown for Lorenzo White. Langlo kicks it off. And it's Jefferson a yard deep in the end zone for Michigan. Fumbles the football. Michigan State had a shot at it, but I'm not sure they got it, and they didn't. They did not. One Michigan man there, and Jamie Morris out for him for the ball. That'll put a lump in your throat if you're amazing blue faithful. Well, the break so far, I think it's Peyton 24. Let's take a look. The breaks so far have gone for Michigan right there. I think it was Peyton 24 that knocks the ball loose. Two fumbles, both recovered. Two fumbles by Michigan, both recovered by Michigan. That ball still squirting around and comes out of the stack, and Jamie Morris came flying over the stack <laughs> and picked it up. All right, let's see what happens to Jamie now. His last five rushes, minus four, minus two, zero, five yards plus, and then minus four. So the Spartans are really looking for him, but they go to pass on first down, set up a wide receiver, a flank of screen out here for Morris, and he moves it from the 28 up to about the 30 as John Buddy made the tackle. Next week, a doubleheader for you, Iowa and Michigan at Ann Arbor. At the University of Southern California up in Seattle against the Washington Huskies, who had gone off to an early lead against Arizona State in their game this afternoon. That's a big ball game today in Seattle, in as far as the Pac-10 is concerned, and another big one next week. USC is playing at Oregon today, and Oregon has been the big surprise in the Pac-10 so far. Time has run out in the first quarter of play at Spartan Stadium, and after 15 minutes, of what George Perla said was going to be a lesson in blocking and tackling. It is Michigan State 7, Michigan 3. State 7, Michigan 3. As we go to the second quarter of play, Michigan owns the football, second down and eight. The ball resting just outside their own 28-yard line. Now look at this. You've got three wide receivers spread out for Michigan. No tight end in the lineup right now. Jamie Morris has been the workhorse. Demetrius Brown back to throw it. Throws underneath to Morris. So it's the fullback, Bunt. Jared Bunt, the fullback. Number 32, and he's out jumping over the 35 to the 36. First quarter stats. You got a man hurt, Percy Snow, coming off the field. Leading tackler, but as we look at the first quarter stats, pretty, pretty even the total yards in favor of Michigan State mostly due to that last drive and uh, mostly running plays, not many passes. Uh, Michigan has thrown five and uh, Michigan State threw three. With Percy Snow, the leading tackler, having to come off, shaken up on the play, it puts in Brian Jones, redshirt freshman out of Akron, Ohio. At that middle linebacker position, that's a very important defensive position, the way Michigan State plays it. Morris keeps it. Gets struck pretty good by Derek Reed as he was trying to find some room coming around the corner. There's a loss on the play of a couple of yards back to the 34.
And it brings up fourth down. So in comes Monty Robbins, his first kick today on his second try after a penalty was good for 51 yards. He came in averaging 43 and a half. Washington big over Arizona State. 17 nothing. We'll have the Huskies and the Trojans next week. That snaps high, but Robbins gets it off. He's got pretty good hang time on it. But Ryzen will come back with it to about the 23. 48 yard punt, six yard return. And Michigan State with pretty good field position as they get the ball here for the first time in the second quarter. Oklahoma State, and Colorado, Oregon out to a 7 0 lead over USC. And Penn State beating Rutgers. Alabama having some trouble. There were several people suspended by Bill Curry off the Alabama. He's done that before. Team. Not at Alabama, but uh, at Georgia Tech. About half of his uh, front line, offensive front line. First down for the Spartans now. And Lorenzo White having a big day. He's got the ball again. Penalty flag goes down as White is cut down around the 29-yard line. The flag came out of the referee's pocket, Jim Kimmerling. Holding against the Spartans. Billy Harris is back in the lineup for the Michigan Wolverines. They retaped his ankle. And Big Billy is back in there, number 56. Two coaches have a lot of respect for each other. And talking with Curlis yesterday, he says Bo is a done a great job at Michigan and uh, there's nothing that he could say uh, against him and obviously they feel the same way because uh, Bo was saying the same things about Perlis and uh, there's a lot of respect for each other and this it's a grand old rivalry 31 10 Indiana now over Ohio State I would say the Hoosiers have that one pretty well in hand after the penalty now Michigan's defense penetrates Billy Harris, sore ankle at all. Dex Lorenzo White back at the 10 yard line. Harris is just going to make a quick move on the center right here. Watch him as he goes around him. We said he was a dominant player. The center cannot block that man one on one. You're going to have problems offensively trying to run the football. They need about 23 and a half, 24 yards to pick up the first down on second down. McAllister gives to White. White weaving his way in traffic out to the 21. Third down at about 13. This would be a, an interesting call here. Michigan State backed up in their own 20-yard uh, line. Let's see if Perlis lets the young quarterback, McAllister, throw as we saw Bo Schembechler allow his quarterback to throw out of his own end zone a little earlier. He's got Boyer and Risen to the wide side of the field as their wideouts. And McAllister rolls that way looking to throw. Gets it off. Oh, terrible pass. Awful. And it is dropped, just flat dropped by Eric Campbell, and Campbell could almost see the end zone. Maybe Eric started looking for blocking help and just plain dropped the ball, but it was a terrible, terrible pass. Well, it was a poor decision. He had a man that was running. Campbell cut in front of the man. As you take a look, watch to the bottom left of your screen. The receiver at the bottom left stops and goes back. That's Boyer. Now he sees Boyer. He doesn't see Campbell coming right there. It made a poor decision. When you take that long and you roll that way, the entire defense is going to roll there with you. Just eat it. Be done with it. Montgomery in to punt. Knocks it out pretty well. Coming back to John Colasar. Colasar just squares up and pulls his way back up across the 40 to the 42. It was a 47-yard punt for Montgomery and a nine-yard return for Colasar. At 11.29 to go in the first half. 7-3, Michigan State lose. Ball is at the 42-yard line. 
It is the best starting field position for Michigan in the ball game, and Detroit has rebounded to regain the lead in the American League Championship Series. Indiana hammering Ohio State. Oregon is out 14-0 over Southern California. It's going to be a little bit chilly over there in Detroit, about 110 miles from here for yeah. baseball. It's not bad football weather, but... All right, first down from the 42. Michigan State almost jumped. They're pointing at John Elliott, the left tackle, for having moved. And uh, you got two flags, one from the linesman, and uh, it looks like that may very well be the call. It's Big John kind of lost his concentration for a second. Tonight, Robin Williams, Whoopi Goldberg, and Carl Reiner will get together with Carol Burnett. And that ought to be worth an hour of laughs, huh? <laughs> then Pat Morita hits the streets on the dead run, O'Hara, followed by an all-new hotel. That's tonight on ABC. So it's first and 15 now as the ball comes back to the 37 for Michigan. Brown to Morris. To the 40. Three yards. Well, maybe trying to break a string. Oh, That's a this. terrible mismatch. You know that it happens, though. Uh, a lot of schools have to have to in order to maintain their program go play for a payday and that's exactly what the Cal State Bulletin Florida game represented as opposed to playing the games that Michigan State has played this year I mean that's they right. played some tough schools uh, no uh, no easy schools on there four top 20 teams the first four weeks it's second down and 12 as Demetrius Brown drops the throw comes one got it to Colazar and John is all down just short of Apparently up the first count. It'll be close, but I think he's going to be just under the marker. So it'll be third and short as, uh, again, Brown looks very good in drilling one to Colasar in front of John Miller. Colasar is an outstanding uh, wide receiver. Has tremendous speed, 4-3 speed, and coming into this game had had 33 career receptions for an average of 27 yards. He's a big play man for you. All right, it's third, a yard and a half. And they go up the middle with it with a fullback bunch carrying, and he will pick up the first down at the Michigan State 46. Okay. What is it these wide receivers are wearing now? The scuba gloves, scuba diving gloves, or something like that? They wear some gloves when, when the weather gets a little cool like this to help catch the football. When, when, when the weather gets cool, the ball gets slippery. Right. It's a little slick, so it's Art. a little tough to catch it, and they'll wear these gloves to, to give them a little bit better traction. It's they took too much to keep their hands warm, but the traction is better. They took the stick them away from them, and they went and got something else better. <laughs> right. yeah. Brown back to throw it again. He's under pressure. He gets away from one, but can't get his momentum back, and it's John Buddy getting the sack. It's play action, and from the middle of your screen right there, Buddy, 87, is untouched. This is what the state's defense does. The stunning style of that defense creates hesitation in the offensive line and also creates uh, mismatches and also times where your defensive lineman, there's going to be a hat on him, nobody there to block him. There's your final. Indiana, 31, Ohio State, 10. Percy Snow is back in now. Huge loss on that play by Buddy on Brown. Ball all the way back to the 38 of Michigan. And they can't find any running room at all as Buddy again is right there on Brown. Buddy is over here. He's just going to slant to the inside. It's a quarterback draw. If Buddy hadn't been there on the uh, on the uh, game, the little slant to the inside, as you see, there's a huge hole in the middle Style, defense, slanting, causing problems for Schembechler's offense. Third down and about 27 now for Michigan. 8.40 to go in the first half. Michigan State leading 7-3. Down, throw it again. Gets it away down the middle, intercepted. Thrown right into the arms of John Miller. Penalty flag goes down as Miller gets back inside the Michigan 45. The penalty flag thrown up around the 48-yard line of Michigan State. Might very well.
well be illegal use of hand or a clip. Blocking, blocking below the, the waist. And right there you see a Moeller talking to the young quarterback Brown, third and 27. The thing you, the thing you gotta think of here is don't make a big mistake. He overthrows the tight end. Was right. This is a tough way to, to throw the football. Tough way to make a living. Third and 27. Had his man. He just overthrew it. He had to throw it over one of the linebackers. Take a look at the protection. He had good protection. He had to throw it over the short people, and he just threw it a little bit too far, and Miller was there with good vision on the football. A penalty against Michigan State will give them the football first down at their own 33-yard line. Spartans are leading it, seven to three. The ball now. They own it. First down at their 33. McAllister trying to set up a screen, lobs it out there. They've got the screen working. This is White, and Lorenzo White goes for the first down up to about the 47, 48 yard line. Nice play. It's a good way to get the ball to your big man. But watch McAllister. He never stops to set up the screen. He just keeps going back. You, you, your defensive linemen are going to go away. White makes a nice play to get upfield away from the charging defensive line that is coming back. McAllister's got to set for a second and then drop back on the screen. White again. Penalty flag. Waiting for the penalty, here's Jack Aroot. You know, Keith, they take their football seriously here in Lansing. One of the things that they've done is made it against the law to play hail to the victors. Against the law, that is, if you've got it in a horn, a bell, or any person that shall play it, well, then it's against the law here. They consider it noise pollution by an ordinance that was passed about three weeks ago. But this band that you see right here, the University of Michigan, they can play it without breaking the law today. Let's go back up to you. What about the vigilantes waiting for the bus? <laughs> Penalty against Michigan State. So the Spartans make a mistake, hurt themselves after a six-yard pickup by Lorenzo White. Ball comes back to the 30, near the 37. And it'll be first down and 20. White again. He may be gone. Nope. Made his cutback. Number 15, uh, David Arnold, made him cut back, and they were able to run him down. But it's first down, Michigan State at the 16 of Michigan. Excellent blocking. This play was designed to go outside. He cuts back inside of Sargent's block, number 49. And now he gets to go straight up, straight up field. He's going to get caught trying to cut back. But an excellent cutback by Lorenzo White. White having a big day. He had a big day last week at Iowa. He's got 100 yards already today and 12 carries. That play good for 47 of the 100. And it's first down for the Spartans. Go back to the wishbone. They're really working him. And he'll pick up a couple of yards on that carry. We've not seen Blake Ezor yet in the ball game. I thought they might pull him there and let him catch his breath a little bit. But they're working him. It's tough to pull a guy out when he's having a hot day and a good day and a good drive. And uh, Ezor is a very capable young man. Uh, Southmore uh, running back. It's got a lot of speed, but uh, Perlis wants to go with who's hot right now. Second down and eight from the 14. McAllister. Played very, very slow to develop, and Mark Messner just ate it up. You're right.
right, Keith. It was slow to develop. Messner at the top of your screen. The tacker, tackle, Hool, 74, set outside. The ball is supposed to go wide to the right, but he didn't get out there quick enough. The backs were too slow on their fake, or the quarterback was too slow getting out of there. And that's why you have to have the coordination up front and in the backfield, and that time it turned into a loss. Loss is eight yards back to the 22-yard line. Michigan State calls a timeout. They have two remaining. And the time remaining in the first half, six minutes and 18 seconds. We're talking about these gloves that the receivers use. See, on the outside, they're nylon. On the inside, they're with a tacky substance. They'll help you to hold on to the ball. But what's more, if you wear them and you're an announcer, they help you hold on to the microphone. Let's go back up top side. Keep your fingers warm. I think you better grow into those. Those look like they were a decent <laughs> alignment. <laughs> Got about an inch and a half on each of the end of each finger. Third down and 17. They'll outlaw them one of these days, too. McAllister gives the ball away as they try to reverse it with Bernard Wilson. And the Michigan Wolverines eat it up again, all the way back to the 35. And John Herman was the man. They may have taken him out of field goal range there. I don't, I don't like the call, Keith. It, it takes too long. Here's a man. Whenever you're third and long, you get a lot of penetration. Here's the reverse man coming back, and the man at the bottom of the screen is going to see it the entire way. Third and long, you're going to get a lot of penetration in your secondary, in your backfield, and that's, uh, that's good to take him out of the uh, field goal range. Well, they're going to try it. It's man size, though, 52 yards. He has a good leg. Let's see what happens. Nope. Way short. Ball bounces down on the three and goes on into the end zone. So the Michigan defense suddenly rears up and says, hold on a minute, fellas. Uh, the call on third and long, I think, was kind of protecting the quarterback, McAllister. They didn't want to throw into this coverage the way Demetrius Brown had just thrown an interception. So they tried to call something with a little pizzazz, a reverse, and it backfired on them. And uh, they got out of it with uh, no points. Five minutes and 28 seconds to play in the first half. Michigan gets the ball back at their own 35. Now, Michigan, in their running game, 18 carries and 25 yards so far. From the 35, wishbone for the Wolverines. Jamie Morris. And maybe a yard. Mark Nichols was the first man, number 83, to get there for the Spartans. I tell you, he's a tough dude, isn't he? He is the leader of that defensive line, which is the strength of that uh, defensive team. He led the team in sacks the last two years, and uh, the coordinator, uh, Nick Saban, feels as though he'll be a number one draft choice uh, next year when they start uh, choosing the talent. Tough young man. It'll be second down and nine. The ball out near the 36. Three wide receivers. Demetrius Brown going deep for Colasar. No chance. Good coverage, too, by Derek Reed. Reed was going with Colasar pretty much step for step. It was good coverage all the way. And uh, I asked uh, Schembechler yesterday why he didn't get Brown into the game more last year because he knew he was going to lose Harbaugh, his, uh, his uh, All-American, All-Big Ten uh, quarterback from last year. He said, well, he said he's a good kid, but I had some problems with him last year, and I had to stri straighten him out. So I took him off the road trips. I made him run the scout team. Uh, he didn't get to, uh, to go uh, on any of the games. And uh, so I had to straighten him out as a man first. And I think for that, he's uh, a little bit behind in his development. But that's the way Bo develops his young men. Demetrius shoots it down the middle. It's intercepted. A very good play by John Miller, his second interception of the day. Miller watching Brown. Read his eyes, read him all the way. Brown's going to throw into double coverage. Here's the receiver. He's going to come down and break to the inside. The two men covered him are right here. He's going to step right in front of him. They got him in and out. Miller's watching him, 44. As soon as he stops, he breaks to the inside of him and picks off his second interception. And the Michigan State Spartans take over at the 44-yard line of Michigan. 
And here comes Lorenzo White. And he's got a first down as he runs it inside the Michigan 34 before Grant and Mitchell can bring him down. White now has 141 of Michigan State's 171 total yards. And most of that yardage is coming to the left side behind Mandarich and Kula, Shermer, their, uh, their center. White going the other way. He's inside the 15 to the 13. Another Michigan State first down. Detroit wins. Seven to six at Tiger Stadium. Now two one twins in the American League Championship Series. Here, three minutes and 58 seconds to play. Michigan State leading seven to three. Lorenzo White, 15 carries, 132 yards. Out of the game now. Michigan State sends in Blake Ezor at the eye back, tailback. First out at the Michigan 13. Threatening again. Pullback. Four. Four. Powers to the eight. Picked up almost five yards on the carry. Michigan State offensive front, Bob Greasy, is winning the war right now. Exactly what Perlis said we want to do. We want to have a, an old-fashioned style football game. Strap it up and go play offensive line against defensive line. That's where this game is going to be won or lost today in the trenches. Second down. Ezor. Sophomore from Las Vegas. And they hold him up at about the 11. Couple of yards on it as the two inside backers for Michigan, Grant and Milligan, bring him down. Ezor's father is a uh, casino boss. Uh, one of the casinos out there in uh, Las Vegas, and he he had called Perlis, who was a friend, and said, "George, uh, I got a good, uh, I got a son that's a pretty good player. I think you ought to take a look at him." And, uh, George Perlis said, "Well, says I've heard all those calls before. You know, the father calling to tout their kid." Turns out that he was a high school All-American in Penn State and Notre Dame and Miami were after him, too. Third down and three from the six. This is Lorenzo White. And he's going to have a first down, I believe, out of the carry before Alan Bishop. into second place, second only, to Archie Griffin, who was a double high school trophy winner at Ohio State.
Spartans have been impressive. Indiana clobbered Ohio State today, 31 to 10. So we're getting. Uh, how about Indiana, Oregon, and the Rose Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> Oregon is playing very well, and uh, if uh, if Michigan should lose this game, that's the uh, numbers black, we just told you about there. Uh, black, black Sunday in the Big Ten, when both uh, Michigan and Ohio State both lose, that would really play the wide open. Really would. Jefferson, Pete, Michigan. High hanging, short kickoff taken by Allen Jefferson. And uh, Allen comes back to about the 27 yard line. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football next week will have a matchup out of the AFC West, Los Angeles Raiders and the Denver Broncos. From Mile High Stadium at 9 Eastern Time here on ABC Sports. Dan Reeves probably looking around trying to get some. Uh, more folks this week <laughs> after what happened to him last week. I think a lot of teams are looking around for some folks. Well, the 49ers, a whole bunch of them have gone back, and they were looked pretty strong uh, as it was, didn't they? They certainly did. You know, the, the teams that, that took that the strike possibility seriously, the front offices, and went out and got the players are the ones with the good teams at this right. point. Right. First down, Bill Webb is in the backfield now with Jamie Morris for Michigan. 14 to 3, the Spartans have the lead. Two minutes to go as Demetrius Brown throws down the middle, and that's an outstanding catch by John Kolosar. They finally get John on the ground. Both sides pretty feisty here because uh, this is bragging rights kind of a game. Kolosar just runs a square in route to the middle, and the ball is thrown behind him and makes an outstanding catch down and it doesn't have to be down by one of the defensive players but they get a little excited football is at the 41 yard line now and it's a first down for the Wolverines bunch is back in now at fullback he's the bigger man 225 pound sophomore pretty good blocker Brown gives it to Jamie Morris Morris is going to get to about the 44-yard line before he is thrown down. Three-yard pickup, Jack Aruth. Keith, what a marked contrast between the two sidelines here. University of Michigan, Bo Schembechler and the entire team, they're all downtrodden. They're just angry. They don't look as if they're really too pumped up. The same can't be said for Michigan State, however. They're bouncing around on the tiptoes. They're excited. Lorenzo White just winking and slapping everybody around. They feel they've got this game in hand at least during the first half. Back up to you. Second down and seven. Brown back to throw. Goes big. Polisar. No. John almost uh, cracked it down. Todd Crum was back there, but Polisar still made it reasonably close. Brown has a very strong arm to that ball a long way, but Crum was back there in good position. And, uh, Crum was uh, also plays on the baseball team for Michigan State. In fact, was drafted by the Mets last year and turned down a great deal of money to to uh, stay with Michigan State. Crum was to the top right of your screen. Knew he couldn't catch it and did a nice job of not interfering and getting an interference call down the, down the field. Call it third down and seven from the 44-yard line. Down throwing again. That's holding right there but to get away with it. And the pass is thrown to McMurtry, and it is good for a first down for the Michigan State 47. And I'll guarantee you that was holding. <laughs> McMurtry releases inside. And Crum is there to make the hit. I think it was Elliott that was doing the holding. It was a Michigan man that had a Michigan State man his arms around it. Yeah, it was um, 74. Who's on? Yeah, yeah. On the other side. Yeah. And that's what Perlis is upset about. On the state 47, Brown, little play action again, throwing, gets it off down the middle, and that one is incomplete and almost picked off. Diving for the ball was Harlan Barnett. 
Came very close to picking it up. Intended for McMurtry. Talking with Perlis yesterday, he says this is going to be a game like when I was coaching the defensive line for the Steelers, we used to go to Cleveland. And he, there was an arch rivalry just like this one. He says, and we'd go over there and we knew it was going to be a battle. And the uh, and the Browns were holding his defensive lineman. And Chuck Noll, the head coach, was uh, complaining about his guys getting into fights. He says, Coach, they're holding my guys. He says, I got to turn them loose. He says, and the offensive guys were leg whipping, and he had pads on their shins of the offensive lineman. And he was yelling at the officials, What do you think they got those pads on their shins for? <laughs> he gets into it. Second down and 10. Brown back again. Gets his pass off, and it's into the crowd. Incomplete. He slaps his hands in frustration. Pass intended for Callaway, and Chris might have been available to him if he'd have been able to get it to him. You see the time, only 35 seconds remaining. 14 to 3, Spartans lead. Michigan's running game in their last 17 carries, zero yards. Well, Bo knew coming in that he was coming up against a very tough defense against the run. Knew he'd have to throw the football. Thought he could still run it in the past uh, couple of years with the same defense. He's run for 160, 170 yards. That's, but that's still well below what they normally get. Third down and 10, three wide outs, and Brown throwing. Passes away, intercepted. That's Miller. John Miller has his third interception of the ball game with 26 seconds to go in the first half. Well, when you sprint out, you're going to have more time. Here is the receiver. He's going to go in and break out. There is a the problem right there is Miller. And when Miller sees it coming, He's back there playing the field, playing a two-deep zone, sees the receiver all the way, sees him rolling out. Now watch Miller. When he comes up, cuts right in front of the receiver. Excellent timing. Miller was a corner last year, was moved to safety to try to get a little bit more speed on the outside. I'd say Miller's shown some good speed today. Three interceptions, not bad for a half. Let's see if they don't just run out the clock now. Give it to Lorenzo White. And that'll get the clock going. Pick up from the 38 to the 40. And they're going to let the clock go. And they'll go to the clubhouse at halftime with the Michigan State Spartans leading the Michigan Wolverines by a score of 14 to 3. And it appears the Big Ten... Ooh. That lady is waiting in the wings, but she has not uttered a sound. As Mike Gillette will get ready to kick off here, and Michigan State will have Craig Johnson and Blake Ezor deep. Ezor 26, Johnson 28. It's going to be Ezor. Had a little trouble. It's easy to start looking around for help and lose the handle. You look at the halftime stats, the left column, Michigan, looked down for rushing yards, 29. They led the league in rushing coming into the game. They were the number one rushing team. The other key there is the turnovers, the three interceptions that Brown threw. Only one of them resulted in points for Michigan State, and that was a touchdown. Spartans will come out. James Moore and Lorenzo White in the backfield behind Bobby McAllister. Andre Risen, who's been quiet so far today. One wide out and Willie Boyer the other, and it is Lorenzo White. And the Wolverines jump him. And jump him quickly for a loss on the play of about a yard. J.J. Grant and Eric Campbell. Michigan State dominating the second quarter of play, particularly to lead it 14 to 3 as we go into the second half. McAllister again to White, and White just runs over the behind the left guard, Kula. 
Mark Messner brings it down, and Messner's got a mess of tackles again today. Up front, it's Mandarich, Kula, Sherma, Tata, Hool, Sargent, and Gusevich, the tight ends in the ball game right now. And Michigan State looking now at third down and eight after Ezor failed to handle the kickoff cleanly and finally got a hold of it and brought it back to about the 12. So Spartans start the second half in a hole, but remember they've got Montgomery, who is one of the premier punters in the country. And there's almost no wind today. Very, very quiet. But quite cool. And now they put the tight end in motion and pitch it back to White. White trying to find some daylight. We'll get it out to about the 15, and that'll do it. As the Wolverines come out fired up to start the second half, and Montgomery comes on now. And we'll see how well he can deliver. And he needs a big one here. Billy Harris, 56, controlling the center of that uh, defensive line, going against Shermer, number 60. It's over and gets a piece of it. Michigan, by the way, has blocked a Michigan State punt the last two years they've played. Montgomery standing at the goal line, gets a low snap, no pressure, gets it out, a low kick, Colazar back deep, is going to take it on the bounce at the 44, and go down about the 45. 41-yard punt, so Montgomery did not get all of it, and the Michigan Wolverines in their first possession of the second half will have a very good starting point. The first half possession for the Wolverines, the interesting is point of the last three possessions interceptions the last three times that Michigan had the ball and Schembechler was trying to run the football and when he couldn't do that he was forced to throw and his uh, quarterback Brown put it up three times and had three interceptions and that's got to be on his mind a little bit I'm sure he's kind of lacking in some confidence now until he completes a couple passes. This is a very big possession for this ball game right here I think Bob. This is Jamie Morris working through and he's got just about five yards before uh, they can get him Jack Keith you speculated as to whether or not George Fearless had the same sort of speech to his troops as he had one week ago well it wasn't the same but it was just as intense he reminded his team that he had 30 minutes of ball left to play and then quoting George that if they played well like they did in the first half it would be a game that they would never forget let's go back to you I imagine he had their attention. Both of these coaches, good motivators, and they say the right things to these young men. Second down, five and a half. Ride it off, keep it. Ran a little bit of a belly there. The old belly series, it's ain't nothing new in the game. I mean, somewhere along the way, somewhere in the past, it's been tried before. <laughs> That's a little bit short of the first down by a couple of yards. One thing about Demetrius Brown, uh, he is a tough kid. Uh, in talking with uh, Moeller yesterday and also uh, Schembechler, they said uh, you can knock him down, he can be uh, knocked down when he's running or intercepted, and he'll come right back. He's a tough kid mentally, tough physically, and they've got a lot of confidence in this young man. Third down and two for Michigan at the 46 of Michigan State. They go to Jamie Morris. He's got the first down. It'll be first down Wolverines near the 43 of Michigan State. Nothing fancy, just knock them down and run it hard. They've been looking for him. He got most of that yardage on his uh, the first series of the game. Well, Michigan moved it down and uh, settled for a field goal. Morris is literally at the 44, just inside it, or the officials might call it the 43. Vitale snaps it. Ball goes from Brown to Morris, and two yards as Percy Snow gets the tackle. They've called his uh, name enough over this part of the se season already, but Percy Snow, number 48, is only a sophomore. And he's playing behind that stunning defensive line, which means most of the time the offensive lineman cannot get through that defensive line to get a hat or a helmet and block Snow. He slides from one side to the other, making the tackles. He's only about 211 pounds. It's a little different system, but it effectively winds up the same that Chris Spielman has that kind of freedom over at Ohio State. 
They cover the offensive lineman, let him run side to side, make tackle. Second down and eight, and Demetrius Brown looking to throw it. Goes down the pipe, and it's picked off again. Overthrew the man, and Todd Crum has this one. And so the Michigan offense continues to self-destruct under the young quarterback, and we've got a penalty flag. They're going to wave it off, I think. Jim Kimmerling threw the flag out there, but Jim threw it right in between two players that were jawboning each other, and all he wanted to do, I think, was shut them up, and he effectively did that. Last four possessions, four interceptions, all on overthrows. The two safeties, Crum gets this one. Miller got the other three. To the top of your screen, number 35 is Todd Crum. The receiver breaks to the inside. He just overthrows him. He did call personal fouls there, but they're offsetting personal fouls, so it has no particular impact on the ball game. And you can see Coach Mallory now having some serious conversation with Demetrius Brown. It's Michigan State's ball out at their 30, and McAllister gives it to Lorenzo White. And ain't going anywhere this time. David Arnold was camped on the riverbank, and he got him. Arnold got hurt. Up limping, yeah. Has to leave the ball game, or did he? No, no he's he going to stay there. He doesn't want to get out of there. Listen to this. At halftime, it's Oregon 21, Southern California nothing. Mm. Halftime, Washington 17, Arizona State nothing. Out in the back 10. McAllister's going to turn it upfield. And won't get much out of it. Just about the line of scrimmage, and here's another flag. Falling out of the sky. It's against Michigan State. That's blocking, pushing in the back. Illegal use of hands. Michigan State has used the young quarterback, uh, McAllister, very well today, not allowing him to throw the ball too often. The times he has thrown it, uh, five coming into the second half, he's completed four, and he's run the ball very well and controlled the offense. We have an illegal use of the hands against the offense. Decline, third down. It's only five yards. Right now, uh, by declining the penalty, they go to a third down and 12. There's a key uh, factor in this ball game right there, the turnovers. Not so much they've created points for Michigan State. Michigan State did take one turnover and move down and score a touchdown, but they have stopped Michigan drives. 14 to three, Spartans lead, 9.20 to go, third quarter. Third and 12 from the 28. Run it with White. And they finally lasso him two yards short of his first down with Mark Messner and Eric Campbell, the primary tacklers on the play. He just about slipped out of that crowd. He was only one stride away from picking up his first down. It's going to be a toss. Watch the center. After he snaps it, he's going to pull and come around. Not many centers in college football can snap the ball being quick enough and agile enough to get back around as you see a nice hole and he actually runs into his tackle Hool. And so on fourth down and two Montgomery has to punt. Colasar is beat. This time Montgomery hits it. Hangs it up there. Colasar at the 16. Down at the 13. That's Carlos Jenkins, a linebacker, a freshman number 51, who was really flying. 45 yards punt, minus six. Instead, they're back on the 12, where it's first down for the Wolverines. And the offense is having a hard time today. Polisar will come wide to the bottom of the picture now. Brown sets him up with Morris, the eye back. Jamie's got it. Up close to the 15. Jack a root for a moment. 
Keith, you talk about on-the-job training and the concerns that both coaches had for their young quarterbacks. Well, Demetrius Brown, who threw that interception just an exchange ago, well, when he pulled over and the defense took over, he was huddled with the offensive coach, the quarterback coach, and they kept pounding it into his head. Remember, when all the receivers are closed up, don't throw the ball away. If you're going to throw it away and you're not going to eat it, throw it away into the stands. He shook his head and then looked downward. Back to you. Second down and seven from the 15. Down back. Let's see if he learned anything. Down the middle. Pass caught for the tight end. First time Jeff Brown, the tight end, has seen the ball all day. And it's good for a first down up to the 25-yard line. Most of the throws that Brown has made today has been to the middle of the field. Either short ones like that one or the long square ends, the ones that he has overthrown to the, to the safeties. The four interceptions were intercepted by safeties in the middle of the field. I think they can throw the ball to the outsides a little bit more, work on one-on-one -on, -one on the corners for Michigan State. Jeff Brown leaves the ball game. A little gimpy. And they go to the fullback, Jared Bunch. And maybe a yard, that'll do it, because there was just no daylight inside that time. Buck Lowe rolling along at 7-10 to go in the third quarter. And Michigan State leading it 14-3. Tim Beckler is the offensive coordinator. If you're wondering, he doesn't uh, just relay him from uh, anyone. Uh, he is the brain trust. and uh, He's the man that calls the plays and responsible for their outcome. Second down, nine for the Wolverine. Michigan State man jump, got back, made no contact. Brown gives the ball to Morris. Morris hit behind the line of scrimmage. The game is tough enough, and he pulls up after the first impact by Harlan Barnett. And Arizona State now has come back against Washington in the fourth quarter, and Oklahoma's finally been able to get their act going down in the Cotton Bowl. So it's a gain of a yard by Jamie Morris now, and it is third down and about eight. Jamie today, 21 carries and 67 yards. We've got a timeout called by the officials. And about eight. Ball out at the 27-yard line. Brown throwing. Caught by Kolasar. Good for a first down at the Michigan 48-yard line. John danced in between two and took a lick but held the ball. Excellent throw. Again, a square in. This time the receiver's going to break to the inside. The man that has been picking him off came up here a little bit shorter. Brown threw it over his head. They call him a robber, that defensive back in the middle of the field. He's trying to steal the ball there. He throws it deeper. Big completion for Brown. You know, how can you look so good on one throw and so bad on another? He's trying to force those throws. He's trying to complete them all. You cannot complete them all. Some of them are going to gotta hit the ground. Going to throw it again on first down to the sidelines. He throws another interception. John Miller has four interceptions in the ball game. I mean, that, he's not a robber. He's a professional thief today. Receivers out here is going to run the out. The problem is Miller is here, and he's going to slide out here underneath it. He doesn't get the ball out there quick enough over Miller's head. Miller sees it, runs to the out the entire way. A lot of times, Keith, when you're back here, you don't see Miller. See all those guys in there. You don't see Miller, or if you do, you think you can get it out there before he gets to it. Miller has four interceptions. Michigan State has five total. Troubles on the KU right now. Miller's four interceptions in the ball game, incidentally, a Michigan State University record. The NCAA record is five interceptions by an individual in the game, and I believe there are several people that might have their hands in that record. Right now, the Spartans have the football first down at their own 39, and they lead 14 to 3. And McAllister gives it to Lorenzo White, and he steps away from one, but there are just too many white shirts there. He got away from Doug Mallory, but then finally is, uh, is Corral. They're scuffling around over the ball, but uh, he was down. Well, the ball came out, but it was close, but you don't want to give the referee that choice as you see the backup quarterback for Michigan warming up, Michael Taylor. 
White long ago should have said this play was over as he was down before the ball came out. He just tried to string it out too long, and Michigan was in good shape to stop that play. I remind you one more time that Andre Risen has not seen the ball today at the end of a forward pass. And he won't this time either as the fullback, James Moore, carries for Michigan State. And you've got four minutes and 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. And the Spartans have been sputtering here in the third quarter. The AT&T Tennis Challenge men's final. Anasona gets McEnroe tomorrow. It'll be live except on the West Coast at 4 Eastern time here on ABC. $500,000 total prize money? One of the wrong game. <laughs> Third down and 13. They pitch it to White again. And Lorenzo again puts a shoulder on a couple of tacklers and just booms up field. But it's going to be punting time for the Spartans. Montgomery comes in one more time. The Michigan State offense has been pretty quiet here in the third quarter. Well, you, the stands, the fans here at Michigan State are not very quiet. There's a little booing uh, going on around here because uh, it's a little bit conservative for their style, but I'm sure as long as uh, Perlis' defense is playing that strongly, they're not going to take any chances with their offense. Polisar is the beat man for Michigan. The crowd, incidentally, is 77,424, and Montgomery's hit a beauty. Polisar lets it go. It takes a bounce into the end zone. They almost got down there, but it'll come back to the 20. It's a 57-yard punt, and he had just enough spin on it that he all needed a player to come over and explain it to the players and the other coaches. Doing a nice job of it. Demetrius Brown stays in at quarterback. Big deep drop, and he's in serious trouble, and he is down. They're going to mark him down. Just short of the goal line, Travis Davis got him. He was trying to throw the ball. He apparently panicked a little bit in front of it. And they stop him just outside the goal. This is a screen pass to the right side. Jamie Morris, 23, you see? Now he's, he, he needs to get out there. Now the end reads it. Uh, Larson, number three, reads it, goes to cover him. And now Brown tries to scramble and gets sacked for a big, big loss. All the way, ball is almost touching the goal line, as you see. The referee was right there, and Jim marked it just short of the goal line. Well, it's about 30 yards they need here on second down. Jim Kimberling, the referee, is saying to Brown, play, go ahead and play. And finally, Brown, fearful that his teammates can't hear him, calls a timeout. And uh, Bo is simmering. The last five possessions, incidentally, have been five interceptions by Michigan, have ended on interceptions five times. That is the most by a Michigan quarterback since 1959. But you saw Brown turn to the referee three times and want the crowd call, and uh, Kimmerling wouldn't give it to it. There's a look at that screenplay, the one that we, we just saw. Now he sets up, he wants to throw the screen. He looks over there and the man is covered. Now he tries to do the best he can and get away from the defensive lineman. Let's go back and take a look. Run it just a little bit more and I'll show you who he was trying to get. He was trying to get the ball to Morris right here. Now Morris is there. Now watch, watch Stradley right here. The defensive man is gonna go back to cover him. Let it go, let it run. He's going back to cover him. Now the man is covered, he can't throw the ball. So he takes off the other way. The coaching point is, if the man is covered, throw the ball into the ground, incomplete it, because you're not going to get away from the defensive line that had been let go by the offensive line. Well, even if he had taken a penalty there, a delay of game penalty, Bob, it would have, uh, what, two inches? <laughs> On the last play, yes. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, but, you know, he, we mentioned early in the game, he is a young quarterback, the noise, this is his first starting assignment on the road. All four of the pre previous Michigan games were at home, and this is a different environment for him. Second down and about 30. Wedges out for a yard, and that's it. Close to the two, maybe. Oklahoma now galloping along. LSU beating Georgia in the third quarter between the hedges at Sanford Stadium. Oregon in the third quarter, 21 zip over the Trojans. 
it'll be put up time for USC next week up in Seattle against Washington too because the Huskies uh, though that one's not over because Arizona State had closed to within three points 17 14. I'm impressed with Oregon Oregon is playing very well. I'll tell you I am too because I know Rich Brooks doesn't have any players <laughs> but for what he's got have quality and they are playing. Brown turns and gives to Jamie Morris and Jamie runs hard through the traffic and gets out to about the nine eight eight or nine yard line and now Michigan's Monty Robbins will come in and have to kick it. And he needs a big one with a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. The Michigan State Spartans have control of this football game. Commissioner Wayne Duke just walked into the booth. And I think when the day is over, Commissioner, you're going to be looking at a well-shaken Big Ten standing. <laughs> Indiana a big winner today over Ohio State. Robbins, 51 and 48 on his first two kicks. He's got another beauty. Runs Andre Risen back to the 34. Got a big return, though. Back to about the 49, and a fumble on the field, and Michigan has recovered it. Andre Risen had the ball knocked loose. Big hit by Allen Bishop, and covers the ball. 58-yard putt by Robbins. Michigan recovers the football, and the Wolverines get a big break as they possess it now at the 47 of Michigan State. The first turnover, you saw the agony on Perlis's face. Rise in number one. It's been put on the punt return team as you see the ball come out right there because they do not have the passing game that they had last year when Dave Jarema was the quarterback. He caught 54 passes last year, five for touchdowns. This year he's only caught 11 coming into this game, and they're not throwing the ball that much. They want to get some of his ability into the game a little bit more. They put him on punt returns and have been doing a pretty good job up until that fumble. The Michigan State defense has been on the field most of this third quarter. About a minute to go. Give the ball off to Bunch. Bunch is... No, nope, he kept it. He bellied the ball to Bunch, and the quarterback, Brown, kept it. Percy Snow bit on it just like I did and uh, wrestled the fullback down, but the quarterback in the meantime was dancing around with it and got it inside the 45. Well, I go back to what we were talking with uh, Schimbeckler about yesterday with Brown and Taylor and the fact that he didn't have any experienced quarterbacks coming into the year, and he felt it was more important to teach Brown a lesson uh, by keeping him off of the field playing in some of the games. He could have gotten some experience last year, but he wanted to develop him as a man, get some discipline in him before he came out here and start playing in the football games and he may have suffered a little bit for that. Second down and eight for the Wolverines. Yeah. Jamie Morris. And he slips and he drives to the 40. So they'll need about a third down for Michigan. Brown keeps it, flips it outside to Phil Webb, and Webb dives across the 35 and picks up a first down for the Wolverines. Tomorrow night, kick off the night with the Disney Sunday movie here on ABC. It'll be the conclusion of the journey of Natty Gann. Then Robert Urich, Spencer for Hire, and then Dolly, Linda Ronstead, Amy Lou Harris, and Bruce Willis, followed by Dennis Weaver as Buck James. That's tomorrow night on ABC. Kurt Larson had to leave the game for Michigan State. Shaken up. Dixon Edwards replaces him. Red shirt freshman. Ball goes to Jamie Morris. Morris is caught in hell. Falls forward. Picks up maybe a yard or so. And John Miller, who has had a spectacular day for Michigan State's defensive bastion, makes the hit. Four interceptions for John. down at eight 32 yard line Demetrius Brown pitches it back to Jamie Morris got a block on the corner and so gets just enough of him to stop him but Jamie Morris has picked up another Michigan first down Michigan has settled on the wishbone as a offense to try and get some yardage on this team, Schimbeckler staying with Brown, who has thrown five interceptions. If you've just tuned in, had a tough day. 
Michigan unable to run on the ground, has gone to the pass. The Michigan State's defense has been very tough on Demetrius Brown. Chris Callaway rides at the bottom of the picture. Colazar at the top. First down, Wolverine. That is Morris and Jamie from the 21 to about the 18. Third quarter number. Take a look at the rushing for Michigan. Again, only 38 yards. Michigan State 157. And the turnovers are, turnovers are the story. Michigan with five turnovers. Only one for Michigan State. McAllister, the quarterback for Michigan State, has yet to throw a pass in the second half. Makes that a two-yard pickup by Jamie Morris. Ball is on the 19 of Michigan State. Wolverine needs the TD here. Stay in the hunt. Ride it off to the fullback. And Bunch will have a yard or so. Michigan State defensive people, I again say to you, they have been on the field most of the second half. Jim Beckler looking around for somebody to send a play in with. He, sometimes when you send a play and you want a certain man to run the play or somebody to block for the play, and that's why he was looking around. He had several people there he could send it in with and finally chose Polizar. Third and seven. Crowd gets into it. Brown back to throw. Gets it off down the middle. Caught. And touchdown, Morris. Confusion in the secondary. Morris is right here. He's going to come out of the backfield. Comes straight down the field. Now the man that has to cover him is right here. He's going to get late. Coming over across the field of coverage. Morris comes out of the backfield. Goes straight down the field. At Miller who has had the four interceptions. This time he gets burned for a touchdown. He got his feet tangled up when he uh, made that turn. And never did get his balance back. They were late. The problem was. Michigan had a wide receiver that was late in getting off the field. He was over there thinking that he had to cover him when he ran off the field. He said, I've got to be on the other side, and he didn't have time to get there. Michigan apparently planning to go for two, and they have just spent a timeout in order to make those plans. That leaves them only one timeout remaining. And now both wants that entire team over on the sidelines to talk to them because they have now spent the time out and they want to go for two. Well, this is the time to go for it because if you go for two of them, Bunch is the lone remaining back. They run Colasar that gives them trips on the left side and Demetrius Brown rolls it out and throws it. Got it. Colasar. is here in motion coming across the man that's covering him is here both these receivers will see uh, obstacles and he'll just come out here in the flat and catch the football they're not picking they're just causing some traffic a little confusion for the defense thirty six Barnett is a man that had coverage on him throws to his left he's a left-handed thrower and a nice catch by Colazar for a big two points. And so now, the Spartan lead has been cut to three. In 12.06 to play. Drake Johnson and Blake Ezor, 28-26 for Michigan State, deep for Mike Gillette's kickoff. Oh, dribbled it a little bit. It's Johnson. Got to put that ball away. He's got it sticking out there like a loaf of bread, but he gets away with it and comes back to the 28-yard line. Now the question is whether or not uh, George Perlis and his coaching staff are going to release the Michigan State offense a bit here. They've been terribly conservative. They don't have a first down in the second half. And by, uh, they're just simply going to have to give McAllister a little more rope, I think. 
take a look at the scoring drive that was after that fumble. They got the ball on their own uh, on the uh, Michigan State 47-yard line and took it eight plays and got a touchdown. The strength of Michigan State's team is not their quarterback, and they'll see if they let him do something as far as throwing the football. They've got a double tight end alignment. Ryzen, the wide man, will go to White. Lorenzo somehow got through and turns it big. Gets around the corner and goes to the 40-yard line. 12 yards for White. That was a great run. He had patience. He waited for the uh, blocking to, to develop. He's going to run left as he's run most of the afternoon behind Mandarich, his big uh, tackle. And Kula he makes a nice cut up inside and then breaks the tackle and outruns some of the defenders. Power lineup is in there now as they go to the wishbone and give it back to White. And he slipped up in the air and goes down around the 40 as Alan Bishop, the cornerback. Hyping through to get it. Now, Foyer and Ryzen come back in. Ball is put down on the 40. It's second down and 10. Foyer and Ryzen come to the wide side of the field. Part of the picture. McAllister going to throw it. Goes down the middle with it. He drills Foyer. First down. Spartan at the Michigan 43. Boy, that Boyer has made two tough catches, and that was one of them. Impressive. McAllister had not thrown the ball in the second half. He threw it between linebackers. Boyer hooked up right in between them. And it's a big first down and a big confidence boost for the young quarterback. Boyer shaking a little, comes out of the ball game. Now they go back to the eye. Give it to Lorenzo. Found another crack on the right side. And he's got that change of gears. He gives you one speed, but when he sees the daylight, he shifts gears, and he's got 171 yards on 28 carries. One of the few times he's going to the right most of the time he is running wide they give him the ball running wide and he stretches the defense and then he cuts back if he has to and if there's nothing there he has the speed and quickness as you say to put it up a gear and outrun him second down five this is the fullback one of the few times today that the fullback on either team has seen the ball James four pounds inside the 35 well, he doesn't need it. The ball is sitting just short of the 35. Less than 10 minutes to play now. It's third down and close to three. Power football. Football rest at the Michigan 29. 14 to 11. Michigan State has the lead. Coming up to make the hit, Alan Bishop. Bishop hit him hard. Next Saturday, Iowa and Michigan. That's down at Ann Arbor. For some of you and the rest of you, USC Washington. Oh, it's a doubleheader. I'm sorry. Yeah, Iowa, Michigan early, followed by USC Washington late. I'm sorry. USC is up to their hips and ducks in Oregon today. Back goes McAllister to throw. Pass is overthrown. Ryzen was coming back to the ball. McAllister was getting a lot of heat from Billy Harris, and he overthrew his target. Well, if you're going to miss, 
That's not a bad way to miss. He threw it incomplete and overthrew him out of bounds. Brown, on the other hand, has been throwing the ball into uh, other uh, the opponent's jerseys, and if you're going to miss, you don't want to have it intercepted. Callister looking to the sideline for the play. Not allowed him to throw the ball too much today. They want to keep him on the ground, let him run the football. Perlis said, our defense is our strength. And that's what we're going to go with. All right, it's third down and just about 10. They go to Lorenzo White to the short side of the field, and there just isn't enough room because the Michigan defensive people absolutely plugged the lane. And now it is fourth down, and look for Langlow. I don't see him yet. Yeah, there he is. Freshman out of Sterling Heights, Michigan. Puts the tee down at the 33. It is a 43-yard try. He tried a 52-yarder going the other way, and it was short. Montgomery puts it down. The kick is up. And it is good. Barely. Just barely. Oregon 27, USC 7. And it's 27-14, Washington over Arizona State up in Seattle. Indiana beat Ohio State today, 31-10. Purdue beat Illinois, 9-3. Iowa was the winner. Minnesota was the winner. And right now, the Spartans and Wolverines are six points apart. Langlow to kick it off. Jamie Morris and Alan Jefferson of deep. Ben Jefferson most of the day. Uh, Langlow has been kicking it to him. They don't particularly want Jamie Morris to have the ball on a kickoff return. Michigan State opened up its offense a little bit that time. It's been pretty quiet in the second half. And it resulted in three. That's a good strong kick by Langlow. It's Jefferson at the goal line. And comes back to about the 24-yard line. As we work our way toward the end of the ball game, we will choose from each team our most valuable player, and the respective universities will receive from Chevrolet a thousand dollars for their general scholarship funds in the name of those players. Chevy's been doing it 17 years. Going outside, still going outside, and finally Percy Snow drags him down after he picks up eight yards. Oh, give him more than that. They're moving the chain just ten yards. This game means to George Perlis and Michigan State. They have lost eight of the last nine times at Michigan State and 15 of the last 18. And their neighbors. Morris runs into Travis Davis. Big defensive tackle sophomore out of Warren, Ohio. Jamie now has gone over 100 yards. 28 carries. 101 yards. Second down, nine. All near the 36. 77,424 here making noise. J.B. Morris pounds along as Michigan grinds it out. And it'll be third down and about two. You know, we've seen some shots earlier of uh, Schembecker really upset mostly with Demetrius Brown when he took some timeouts, but uh, Bo runs a tough program, but all the boys love him, and they, they call themselves boys. And they say, I want to go to Michigan. I want to be one of Michigan. I want to be one of Bo's boys. He runs a strict program, but under his program, boys become men, and it's an outstanding uh, asset. 
that to uh, Michigan and have Tim Beckler as their coach. He's done a fine job. Alan Jefferson is in the wishbone, and Demetrius Brown, confused perhaps, calls timeout. That's the last one. Michigan has no timeouts remaining at six minutes and 53 seconds to play in the ball game. Michigan just simply couldn't implement the play in time, and they spent their last timeout. Jamie Morris is back in now. It's third down and close to three yards to keep the ball. Six-man front for Michigan State. Brown keeps it, dives, and picks up the first down. He bellied to the fullback, slid off tackle, got in behind Elliott, and he picks up the first down. Take a look at the line surge as we take a look. We said it'd be up front. 72 is Elliott as he buries his man. He calls that, call that a pancake when you knock him over on the backside. He's 6'7 and 305 pounds been running toward him most of the day. The ball is at the 47 of Michigan. First down Wolverine. 17-11. Michigan State leads by six. Six and a half minutes to play. They give it to Jamie Morris. And Morris is hit right at the line of scrimmage. The penetration that time coming from Harlan Barnett. For well, one, Joe Bergen, who's been over there on the side jousting with Big Elliott all day. Michigan State defense has been on the field most of the second half. I was just going to say, Keith, that Elliott uh, is an All-American candidate, offensive tackle for the Wolverines, and the Spartans, of course, know that too, and they've been slanting their defenses mostly towards him to help stop some of that running game they like to run behind him. Second down and 10 for the Wolverines. Brown keeping, caught, spike, two yards. Well, I think now Demetrius Brown is starting to show his mother. He's a street fighter. He's in the middle of the melee. Those of you who have been watching the Washington, Arizona State, welcome to Spartan Stadium, East Lansing, Michigan, with five minutes and 22 seconds to play. Michigan State leading Michigan by a score of 17 to 11. The Wolverines have the ball, third down, and call it seven from their own 49. Michigan State defense bouncing around. Demetrius Brown to throw it. Comes one, complete, caught by McMurtry. And a first down at the Michigan State 36-yard line. Michigan finally got its touchdown just a few minutes ago, went for two and got the two after a field goal in the opening possession of the ball game. There's McMurtry going down, running a little in pattern. They've been throwing these all day. This time, Brown is on target. And a big first down. First time McMurtry has seen the ball all day. Six men up front for Michigan State. Ball given to Jamie Morris, and Morris is checked for the loss. Joe Ferguson, who's been buried underneath Big John Elliott most of the day, finally got to hit somebody. He sure has. He's 6'1", and he's an overachiever. Take another look at it at the top of your screen. 72 against 45. This time, Bergen gets around him with his quickness. Elliott outweighs him by 50 pounds and by uh, 6 inches in height. At that time, speed and quickness got around the big man. Loss of about a half yard on the carry. Second down. Demetrius Brown gives to the up man. Garrett Bunch, the fullback. And he pounds along close to the 31. And that's about a five-yard pickup. Michigan's third down conversions in the second half. Pretty good. Six out of seven. Time. The big thing. 3.40. Jim Beckler has not had a losing season in his 24 years as a head coach at the college level. He hasn't lost a game here since 1969. Round back on third and six. Gets it away. Intercepted. That's the sixth of the day. Harlan Barnett for Michigan State. 
straight, still going. And finally out of bounds, up at the 45. That's one of those negative records. Six interceptions, the most ever by a Michigan quarterback. To the left of your screen, McCurtry will come from there. Now what happens is, Brown thinks he's gonna come underneath the receiver or to the inside of the field. But Murphy read it and went over the top, expecting to throw deeper down the field. It was a miscommunication between the receiver and the quarterback. And Barnett makes a nice return. Three minutes and nine seconds remaining to play. Michigan State 17, Michigan 11, Michigan no timeout left. Well, Jim Adams, let's get back for the final three minutes and nine seconds as Harlan Barnett has the sixth interception by a Michigan State defensive back today. Well, Michigan has won eight straight over the Spartans here at Spartan Stadium, and 15 of the last 18 they give it this time to Lorenzo White, and Lorenzo just moves straight ahead up to about his own 47-yard line. Michigan now really concerned about the clock because sure. they can't stop it with a timeout in less than three minutes to play. And Michigan State is going to use every second that they have on the play clock. There's two minutes and 40 seconds, 48 seconds, and it's running. Lorenzo has 181 yards today. I don't think he ever gives up, but I know he's discouraged. I tell you, if the State wins this one today, uh, Bo will be just 3-2 to two over George Pullis. Yep. And that's a pretty even Steven over the five years. Second and nine. Second and nine. A very cool and calm. Bobby McAllister gives to Lorenzo, and he just drives off his own left guard and tackle. And uh, moves maybe a yard further is all up to about the 47 or 48 yard line. Need a first down, Jim, or you're going to have to give up the football. You need a first down. And it wouldn't be a bad place to call a timeout either. After the clock goes down to, to one second, it wouldn't be a bad spot to call a timeout. And I, they're not going to do it, I guess. There's 15 seconds on the play clock. It's third and eight. Now the Spartans don't want to give it back to Michigan if they can help it here. They'd like to retain possession right down to that last tick of the clock. McAllister needs eight yards. Here's the pitch. Lorenzo White cuts in. Lorenzo gets not quite to the 50, maybe to the 50, but that's still going to be a gain of only two. Yeah. And now the Spartans are going to have to kick it away, and this tension in the crowd is going to be maintained a few uh, seconds longer as Michigan's going to get the hands well, Jim, of the football again. Here's a case, Jim, where you really should take the penalty in the five seconds and let Montgomery punt it five yards further back. You watch what happens here. They're not even going to go out on the field, so let's take the penalty let the eight there's 18 seconds left on the play clock so that will mean a minute and one to play when montgomery does kick the ball so we don't he's at the 50 yard line so you know that greg can kick at 50 yards well with no timeouts that's going to leave michigan just time for two or maybe three plays now there's the flag there's the zero and michigan state will go back to their 45 yard line I don't know what Bo's upset about. He knows they're going to putt. See, a minute and one now on the play clock, or on the game clock. That's seven penalties today, Michigan State, 53 yards. Number 23, Craig Montgomery. Well, here now the game, uh, Terry, you don't want to let some Michigan Wolverine come. <laughs> No, 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 but Fight, watch Montgomery. Fighting through that line and block this one. Boy, Montgomery really concentrate. Yep. yep. Colazar is back deep for Michigan. Montgomery's at his own 31-yard line. Colazar is at his own 10. Martin is the snapper. Good pass from center. And Montgomery booms it. Colazar waits for it. Colazar fumbles the ball back to the 12-yard line. He gets away from one man. It goes to the sideline. He's bumped out of bounds by... Well, Michigan State again. Got him out there for the Spartans. 66, I think that was, Jim. Well, 66, and also in there was a uh, good buddy. His name suddenly... Uh, oh, Jenkins? Yeah. And Matt Vanderbeek. Yeah. Now, here's the situation. Michigan on their own 20-yard line is where he ran it out of bounds. Colasar, after fumbling it, really brought everybody's heart right in their mouth. A 41-yard punt by Montgomery. Not a lot of hang time either. So just 49 seconds to play. No timeouts left. You know they will not huddle. 
They're just going to run. They've got their plays called, Jim. And you know it's go for broke with McMurtry and Jamie Morris, of course, who's a game breaker. He's like Anthony Carter was. Well, unless they get an incomplete pass here, that's the only way they can stop the clock with 49 seconds to go. Demetrius Brown goes back to throw. He may really uncork one. He throws downfield. McMurtry off his fingertips, incomplete, covered by Larson at the 43. So that will stop the clock with 44 seconds to play. He was there, by the way. That ball was catchable. Yep. It was high, but it was on his fingertips. You might now, review the scoring here, Terry, of the ball right, game. I'm just have. looking at uh, Brown. 12 out of 24 passes uh, completed, 146 yards, and of course, six interceptions. Lorenzo White with two touchdowns today. We'll talk about that in a moment. Yeah, you're going to have to because we're probably going to lose our picture from ABC right after this ball game is over, I would imagine. There's Demetrius Brown back to throw again. He throws out here, completes it to his fullback, Webb, and Webb goes out of bounds to stop the clock at about All the right. 40. Michigan State had Michigan score first in this game. A 31-yard field goal by Gillette made it 3 to nothing. But the Spartans in the first quarter came back on a six-yard run by Lorenzo White. The extra point made it 7-3 to three at the end of the first quarter. In the second quarter, Lorenzo again went two yards for a touchdown run. Langlow with the extra point. It was 14-3 to three at the half. In the third quarter, no scoring. In the fourth quarter, a 17-yard pass, Brown to Morris for Michigan, and then a 43-yard field goal by John Langlow, Michigan oh. State. Okay, that brings us right up to date as to where we are with Demetrius Brown, Travis Davis trying to put some pressure. Brown passes downfield. It's intercepted by Todd Crum. Todd's at the 40-yard line and hold down at about the 42, and that should do it. That should do it all right. Seven interceptions by a Michigan State team today. They're absolutely going bananas in East Lansing, and rightly so. You don't beat this guy very often. He's won 15 times. He's only lost three to Michigan State, and now he will, looks like he's lost number four. Demetrius Brown, in all fairness, didn't have much of an opportunity in this situation. Michigan State was playing everybody back, and Todd Crum, that Roverback outfielder, Two interceptions today. John Miller with four interceptions today. Harlan Barnett with a big interception. And there's the man from West Bloomfield in his senior year. He's beaten Michigan twice. Okay, time for about this play, and that's going to be it. 26 seconds on the clock. Robin McAllister probably down to one knee. And he holds, and there he goes, down McAllister. On top of him for Michigan is big number 94, T.J. Osmond, the middle guard. That'll 17 do it. seconds out is going to do it. There is going to be no more time, and the celebration has begun even as the clock ticks down. Michigan State has defeated Michigan by a score of 17-11. to 11. There's a three-way tie for first tonight in the Big Ten between Michigan State, Minnesota, and Indiana. Next week, the Spartans go to Northwestern to play the Wildcats. Look at the celebration here at Spartan <laughs> Stadium. Mayhem. And now the celebration is going to continue probably right about until and beyond the time that you're going to watch this telecast. Lorenzo White, 185 yards rushing, and Jamie Morris, 108 yards rushing right there. Neither one of them have to hang their head, and there is a carried-off-the-field coach, the, the tough, feisty Lithuanian, George Perlis, with a second victory over Bo Schembechler. And the Michigan State flag waves high and proud tonight. From Spartan Stadium, I'm Jim Adams, along with Terry Brigham and our statistician, J.D. Anderson. The final score as look at the celebration here at the stadium tonight. What a Saturday night celebration in East Lansing. The final score, Michigan State 17 and the University of Michigan 11. Well, Jim, we're going to come back with a little postscript here. It's been 18 years since Michigan State defeated a Michigan team in East Lansing. Remember in 84, it was in Ann Arbor. These people have waited a long time to get on this field and celebrate. But look at the crowd on the field. The police could not control it. Your thoughts now, pal? Well, I'm just going to put the mic on for just one second. Hardly anything to uh, point out. We've been broadcasting sporting games for many, many years. And this will go down as one of the finest and certainly the, one of the most thrilling ball games we have ever had, especially when you get the post-game reaction such as this. How often do you see a story wound up with the final chapter still being written after the ball game is over? And as I said earlier, by the time you finish watching this telecast tonight at a very late hour tomorrow morning, uh, the celebration is going to be continuing, I'm sure. Well, Jim, you think back to... 
the Southern Cal victory, a big one on Labor Day against a good Pac-10 team, a victory over Iowa in Iowa City, and to defeat Michigan anytime, anywhere, those losses to Notre Dame and Florida State in the top six in the nation don't look very important right now. This is what looks important. 2-0 yep. in the Big Ten. Yeah, the Spartans will be back in the top 20 everywhere. This is the third top 20 team they've beaten this year. And so as the celebration continues, and look at that shot. A great shot to end it with. Again, the final score here today, Michigan State 17 and Michigan 11. Oh, look at that. Everybody's celebrating tonight.